The governing body of the Jehovah's Witnesses has gone away with the tradition of remaining almost anonymous and has placed its members right in the spotlight. Now, the leaders are seen and listened to directly by millions of Jehovah's Witnesses around the world, making them celebrities, at least around them. And now, the leaders of the religion have realized how annoying it can be to exist as a celebrity, with people constantly wanting to interact with you as a result. That's why Mark Sanderson is here to tell all followers how their leaders want all the perks of being a beloved and powerful celebrity without the downsides of having to actually take a selfie with you. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, let's begin. Well, people today are very, very concerned about their appearance. In fact, it's estimated that worldwide, the cosmetic industry generates some $400 billion every year. Can you imagine? But what is it that makes a person truly beautiful in the eyes of Jehovah? Well, in our text this morning from 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 5, you notice it says, This is how the holy women of the past, who hoped in God, used to adorn themselves. Do not let your adornment be external, the braiding of the hair and the wearing of gold ornaments of fine or fine clothing, but let it be the secret person of the heart in the incorruptible adornment of the quiet and mild spirit, which is of great value in the eyes of God. Well, what's the point? Jehovah is focused not on physical beauty or on the adornment, the external adornment, but rather what's inside a person. This is how Mark opens this talk, like always, with a completely different topic that he's going to pretend is tied to him, annoyed at people recognizing him and asking for his photo. And it's with the stupidest example he could have used, because Jehovah's Witnesses are probably the religion that cares the most about appearances. Everything in the religion is exclusively around appearances. They have very strict and conservative rules about dress and grooming. They don't report CSA to the authorities because it would make the religion look bad. They even believe that being seen preaching will make them appear more attractive to people giving a good witness. Everything in this religion is around appearances. However, Jehovah's Witnesses are kept in this fake manufactured reality where they believe that they don't really care about appearances, despite the news about women being allowed to wear pants and men being allowed to wear, grow beards were the biggest news of the decade. And Jehovah's Witnesses are so used to listening to this narrative and to tune it out that you can tell even Bethelites listening to one of the leaders of the religion are completely zoned out. Well, now when Jehovah looks through all those billions of hearts and he comes across one that wants to serve him, that's filled with love for him, that's willing to adjust and adapt in order to please him, can you imagine how much joy Jehovah experiences? Well, it really emphasizes to us then the need for us to focus not on our external appearance, but on developing that inner person. As the song says, it's the person, not the place. It's the heart and not the face. Well, that's encouraging to many of us, isn't it? <laughs> Mark's audience is so tuned out that Mark makes a joke, pauses for the laughs, and barely anyone reacts. This is how little attention the average Jehovah's Witness pays to their speeches from this religion. Most Jehovah's Witnesses have learned to just pretend to enjoy the meetings while they completely tune out just as it happened right here. Even in a room full of Bethelites listening to one of the leaders of the religion speak, most people are not listening and are simply pretending to listen so they can't even laugh when they're supposed to. Now one area, brothers, I'd like to talk to you about this morning where people today have become focused on external appearance is the whole matter of taking photographs. Now, all of us no doubt enjoy taking a photo with a group of our close friends or even with our relatives. Uh, it's a nice way to mark a special occasion, isn't it? I don't know about you, but I have uh, many photo albums of good memories with friends and family that, that I enjoy looking at. 
But the advent of the smartphone means that almost everyone today has a camera with them at all times, at every occasion. Well, what does that mean? Well, you re may remember that Brother Hurd, in a talk at Gilead a few years ago, mentioned the challenge that governing body members and their wives and other responsible brothers and their wives have with so many brothers and sisters wanting photos. Now, do you remember what Brother Hurd said? He said it was suffering for the sake of righteousness. Well, perhaps we all laughed when Brother Hurd said that. But Brother Hurd was trying to help us. He was trying to help us see a point but I wonder, brothers and sisters, I wonder if we all got the point. I remember that same day when Brother Hurd gave the talk at the Gilead graduation. Several people came up to me after. They said, oh, wasn't that funny what Brother Hurd said about the photographs? Could we get a picture of you? I tried looking up this talk by Brother Hurd that Mark expects his listeners to remember and that I guarantee nobody in the audience does based on how little they're paying attention to this speech already. But it seems to have happened before they started recording these talks and publishing them in JW.org. But can't you see how much suffering this change brings to the governing body? Now people recognize him and want to say hello and can I get a selfie? Why are his followers making him suffer like that? In all seriousness though, I kinda get when famous people like actors and singers complain about having to constantly be available for fans, to a certain point at least. While sure, their fans are the only reason they have a career in the first place, you could argue that what they want is to make art, to be a part of art, to perform on the stage for the entertainment of people. They obviously can't do that and be anonymous at the same time, especially at some levels. You can argue that, at least for some, the fame and recognition simply became a downside of their job instead of the point of it. You cannot argue that with the governing body, especially this governing body. This version of the governing body made itself famous when it wasn't needed. They had been printing magazines and producing indoctrination material while remaining almost anonymous for decades at this point. But this governing body wanted more. This governing body wanted all members to get to know them and know how much the governing body loves them. They made themselves famous, not because they needed to, but because they wanted to. Nobody forced them to change things so they could be in front of the cameras all of the time. And they are so stupid, so delusional, so unable to think ahead that now they're complaining about it because despite asking multiple times, people do what they do with any famous person and want to ask them for a selfie. Mark is very disappointed and wants you to know this isn't the very first time they've cried about it. Well, makes us wonder, did we really get the point? Well, then uh, we had a reminder, didn't we? In the January 2016 study edition, remember this photo appeared? Now, next to that photo, there was a box. Here's what it said. While we appreciate having an opportunity to meet and talk with visiting brothers and their wives, we would show a lack of respect if we treated such ones as celebrities. For example, would it show good manners to take candid photos of such ones without permission while they are eating and engaging in other activities? Would we ask them to autograph our books and Bibles? Would we push in front of others and aggressively demand that our photo be taken with them? Surely, none of these actions display true Christian love. Rather, they could show that we have missed the purpose of the visit and the hard work that such faithful ones do in our behalf. What effect could such behavior have on those attending one of our assemblies for the first time? Yes, since he can't bring out the Bible to make his point, Mark quotes from a magazine he and his buddies are in charge of writing and editing. And he shows this almost offensive pic? This is how the governing body sees their followers. They are nothing but brainless monkeys who are dying to get their photo. Also, what the hell is this lady taking a photo of the back of this other lady's hair? Mark doesn't want you to take photos of him when he's out and about. Wonder why? Saying that you'd be rude if you did. He doesn't want to shake your hand and take a selfie with you if you see him down the street. He loves his followers, but doesn't have time for them. 
And if you thought that asking him or any other member of the governing body to sign the Bible or one of their books is fanaticism, you'd be right, but also might be surprised when you realize that Jehovah's Witnesses may only ask that because they have seen that that's what the governing body do in their magazines. Larchwood on Twitter shared this excerpt of the Watchtower of May 15, 1999, where you see three members of the governing body, including Garrett Lodge, signing Bibles for public officials. Signing Bibles was the governing body's original idea. <laughs> Imagine how delusional you have to be to think you have the right to autograph the Bible. And that's not all. Rutherford also liked having his face plastered all over the place. That's why his books after quitted in him and why you could order some of his books with his own autograph. Only if you bought the book soon, of course. This has always been a business after all. And did you see how Mark told Jehovah's Witnesses to not do this stuff because of appearances? or how it would look to someone visiting the religion for the first time? I thought this was because you were against appearances, Mark Sanderson. Well, now, brothers, please don't miss the point. Uh, the governing body brothers and their wives, as well as uh, other responsible brothers, we love going out and being with the brothers. We love having association. But can you imagine going into a room of, say, 10,000 people where everyone knows you by name? And where perhaps even 5 or 10% of the people would like to have a photograph with you? Can you imagine how overwhelming that could be for a brother and particularly even for his wife? Yes, at least do it for their wives who obviously are more fragile than them. After all, can you imagine a crowd wanting to interact with you and how impossibly horrible that is? Nobody could possibly know how tiresome that is. Nobody who is yet to read the Bible, of course, because if you have, you'll know why Mark can't really extract this lesson from the Bible. Because this is the opposite of what Jesus would have done and is registered as doing. Just read Mark chapter 6 verses 30 through 34. And he said to them, Come you yourselves privately into an isolated place and rest up a little. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure time even to eat a meal. So they set off in the boat for an isolated place to be by themselves. But people saw them going, and many got to know it. And from all the cities, they ran together on foot and got there ahead of them. Well, on getting out, he saw a large crowd, and he was moved with pity for them, because they were as sheep without a shepherd. And he started to teach them many things. That's right before he performed his miraculous feeding of the crowd. He only did that very famous miracle because he hadn't had the chance to eat because he was too busy teaching to the crowds that were constantly looking for him. And his apostles knew about it and were so worried that insisted Jesus take some time off so he could eat. And instead, Jesus told them to bring food and perform the miracle to not interrupt his time with the crowd. What Mark Sanderson is asking from people not only shows him in diametrical opposition against Jesus, demonstrating the governing body does the opposite of what Jesus would have done, it also shows how dumb and pampered this governing body is. They wanted to be on camera, they wanted to be famous, and now they're complaining because of it. So no, Mark Sanderson, we will not be listening to you. In fact, I beg you, if you see them, any of the governing body, ask them for a selfie, kindly. Take a candid picture of them. Take videos of them when they're out and about. Don't harass them, of course, but maybe make sure that they see you taking a pic of them in the street or in the mall. And then post them online, or better yet, send them to me on Twitter. If enough people take videos of them when they're in public, who knows? Maybe we might even find out why Mark is so afraid of us finding out. But that's all for now. Don't forget to hit the like button and consider supporting me like this amazing peeps right here who help me keep the lights on while I spend my nights over analyzing this cult material to read between the lines and come up with these videos and explain the indoctrination behind them. I'm quite busy right now with the convention videos, so turn on your notifications if you want to see them as soon as they come out.